image is the same Hebrew word as that we use for statue. So like when you read the, the, the golden calf image in Exodus, or uh, when you read about the images of other gods in, um, in other parts of the old Testament, again, it's the ancient near Eastern culture and its context. The image of something is not that same thing, but it is, a placeholder for that thing that it represents. So if I build a statue of Judy, I make an image of Judy. That image of Judy is standing in place of Judy, but because it is an image of Judy, it cannot be Judy. So think of yourself in the reflection of a mirror. Um, The person in the mirror is Judy, but it's not, essentially the same thing as Judy herself. How do I experience and how do I see God in this material world when his image is reflected in other human beings? When I see God's image reflected in the mirror that is Judy Casada, or the mirror that is Pastor Bruce Craig or the mirror image of God that is um, you know, Bob drew and the mirror, the mirror metaphor is incomplete, but again, the mirror metaphor is a modern idea that I'm anachronizing. Um, the, the actual metaphor that's used in the Bible is that of a statue. Right. And so, oh boy, there's a whole ancient near Eastern, (laughs) uh, religious, ritual in mind here when we talk about man being the image of God. And you actually find it in the Old Testament where it'll talk about um, the the gods being o- having their mouths open. All right, now that sounds super weird. Uh, what does that mean? That means that let, let's say you and I are in an ancient Near Eastern culture, like we're, we're some Canaanites and we're, we, we make, a, we make a, a wooden image of our God, right? We'll call him L. Um, okay. God doesn't live, that God doesn't live in our, in our, in our, uh, statue until we open his mouth, at which point the breath of L enters into that idol. And then that idol is given a life, true God given life by entering the mouth of our little idol that we made. That's the idea that's being used in Genesis about us. I'm the living, breathing idol that God made of himself to himself. And so are you. So now when you read Genesis two about the creation of man, all of a sudden it's not just about how we're made in the image of God. And, uh, you know, we're, we're super cool and God loves us and everything. It's also saying, Hey, you Canaanite idol worshipers, you know, that ritual that you do to make wooden statues, uh, and, and you say that these are literally, uh, you know, your God and your presence. Actually, that's true about all human beings. And it's true about Yahweh, although he doesn't let us make idol images of our God because we are the idol image of our God. Uh, Genesis two says the breath of life breathed. It says that, uh, uh, God breathed in the breath of life into Adam. And that is when Adam became a living soul. And the very name Adam, which we say, oh, Adam means man. It does not mean man. Adam is a pun on the Hebrew word that means dirt. So when God breathes the breath of life into Adam, what the text is saying is that God took a lump of dirt and he put his life-giving breath into it. And that is the idol image representation of Yahweh on earth, us. And so the biblical claim in Genesis is that a human soul is the marriage of human dirt and God's divine life-giving breath as the physical presence of God within his creation. Every single human. That is to say, at least that was always how it was designed to be from the beginning. 